So this is a 1988 uh, Volkswagen Cabriolet. It's the 1.8 liter, eight valve engine. And it recently uh, overheated. Um, so it overheated, but when it did, my what I noticed was that the fan, the electric fan, wasn't running at any point um, when it overheated. So what I did was, this is not normally here, and you can see like the battery is all kind of disheveled. Um, actually removed the battery to get to, and you can see it way down at the bottom of this tank. So this is the radiator, the top of the radiator. Here's the end tank of the radiator here. And all the way at the bottom of the end tank is a sensor or switch that is basically immersed in the coolant there. So what that switch actually looks like, it's actually still down there. That's right. That's the base of it that you can kind of see um, spun in there. It's hard to see in the video. But this is the switch. This is what's screwed into that tank right there. This is what it looks like. And there is a, let it focus, there's a connector there with three prongs. Okay. So this is what the new switch looks like. What I did was I removed the battery to unplug the little cable that plugs into the end of that switch. And then I replaced the battery roughly. I just put it in and put the, the cables back on it to re-energize the car. Because this is the test I need to conduct. These particular Volkswagens and their earlier models that only have two prongs, two wires. This is a three prong model. If you look at the wires, there's a red wire, a red with a white stripe, and a red with a black stripe. The red wire is basically the power. So if you make a little jumper like this, so it's just a little piece of wire, I stripped both ends and bent it over. So I'm going to put one end in the red wire, which is to the left in this scenario here. So I'm going to just pop it in there. And then I should be able to jump. I should be able to jump. So now. So when I jumped to two ends, you heard the fan turn on. And it was running at a higher high speed. Now I'm going to jump that red in the center. That red connector on the left and the center connector. I'm trying to do this with one hand as I hold the camera. And you hear the fan, so I got jumped with the center, left and center, and you see the fans running at a low speed. And when you go to the end, end one, we're gonna go to the high speed. <clears throat> so that's what the three prong sensor is for. The three prong sensor is basically for uh, a high speed setting and a low speed setting on the fan. The older style two prong sensors, it's just a single speed. There are multiple switches. I keep calling it a sensor, but it's really a coolant switch. They typically have the operating ranges, the temperature ranges, which they operate at, marked on them somewhere. I've, this one has it like kind of on the face of the, of the switch. And I've seen it like stamped here in the side of the, of the um, part as well. So yeah, so this is basically, and people get confused because there's two sets of numbers on here. And they're like, well, which one is it? And it's both. One number represents the low speed, when the low speed switch basically closes. And the other is for when the high speed setting closes. And there's two numbers because it's when it turns on and when it turns off for both scenarios. So this has like a 95, 80, 95, 85. And then 102.92, if we can kind of see right there. So those are the temperatures. So when I jump it, this is telling me that the fan is good, the motor is good, it's getting power. What it's really just saying is if, if I could successfully jump it and I know when the car was running, the fan was not turning on, most likely you have a faulty um, cooling fan switch. 
So I'm going to replace this. The trick to replacing this is pretty simple because based on the location, obviously if you remove it, you're gonna lose coolant. You will lose coolant, so just plan on that. But um, one of the little tricks is like when you're doing it, replace your cap if you took it off because if the cap's off and you replace that, right, the, the air is going to get displaced or the coolant's going to get displaced with air much faster and it's going to leak out much faster. If everything else is sealed up and you're only pulling the sensor out, it will leak. It just won't leak at like a crazy rate. So, so I'm going to pull the battery back out to get access and uh, spin this guy back in, reconnect, and I should be good to go. So here's a better look, battery is removed. If you look down, there's the little temperature switch I'm talking about, screwed into the base there. Here's the replacement, as you can see. Um, so I'm gonna get down here, unscrew this. I'm gonna put something underneath to catch coolant as it leaks out, and then keep this guy, the new guy, close by, so I could quickly get it in there and minimize the coolant loss. So to remove this sensor, you can get in there with like channel locks or an adjustable wrench. I just happen to have a big 29 millimeter socket, which fits right over the whole switch. Again, it's coming out. You're starting to see the coolant leak out. It's actually just gonna quickly pull out the old one get the new one ready to go in to kind of minimize the coolant loss and, and again there was a container underneath so now I'm just going to put the 29 millimeter on it, tighten it up, and then reconnect the little uh, three-prong connector. And that's it. Reinstall the battery and uh, start the car. Top off the coolant reservoir um, up until with the cap off, up until the thermostat opens, and then kind of purge the air out and top off the coolant, and that should be it.